guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, we are here in Grand Turk. I'm Paige. I'm Jer. So we're Paige and Jer. Da -da. This is your first time here. We are basically just your typical normal couple who happens, happens to, to love work Jesus on a, cruise a ship. lot. <laughs> and happens to work on a cruise ship. And we're just trying to give you guys anything and everything that's on our hearts, that's in our minds, that can help you in any way in your life. Which is kind of the point of this video. Yeah. Yes. So this month, Jeremy will be turning 30 years old. And he's not actually worried about it. He's expressed multiple times. It's kind of a cool thing, right? Like, it's like just, a new chapter, a new phase. Just where did the time go? Where did the time go? Um, so a few days ago, I was like, Jeremy, you're about to be 30. Like, what do you wish? that you, I feel like Jeremy's at such a good place in his life. And I'm like, <laughs> so what, what do you wish that you would have known at 20 that you now know at 30 to where if you were stepping in, if you were 19 turning 20, you were stepping into your 20s and you had this knowledge and you could live your whole 20s with it, what would those things be? So I had to start, well, he started talking and I started making a list in my phone and then this week I was like, Jeremy, let's make that a video. Like, Jeremy's turning 30, what he wishes he would have known in his 20s. Because then, all of our followers who are in their 20s, or if you have kids who are in their 20s, or teenagers, or whatever. Or hey, even if you're in your 30s, you can, it's you never can too late. Now. <laughs> it's never too late to be in it's your 20s. It's never too late to be in your 20s. So, what's going to happen here is I'm, and also a lot of these things we've learned together, so it's very, I'm, I'm only 27, but I feel like only. we're crossing You'll be 30 a, yeah, before yeah, you know yeah. it. I remember 27 like it was yesterday. <laughs> your glory years. I feel like we are crossing over into this next chapter of life together. So it's kind of things we both discovered. But anyway, I'm going to read them. He's going to start to speak on them, and I might throw in a few things as well. Yeah. Cool? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. So the number one thing that I, he I says. I don't even remember what I said. We're about to find out. Okay. The number one thing that he says that Jeremy wishes he would have known in his 20s. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, here we go. Jesus. I did know Jesus in my 20s. I found I knew Jesus from a very young age, as we have a whole other video um, about how we've rediscovered our faith. So we will link that below. So check that one out if you're interested in that at all. But I found Jesus at a really young age, but unfortunately, we're going to get through the rest of this list, and a lot of things on this list were me walking away from Jesus. But recently, within the last year, actually, I've really re-found that Jesus was right there with me, yep. and it is unlocked a whole new world, a whole new life, and I think this is for both of us. Absolutely. Um, so I wish that 20 to 28-year-old Jeremy would have dove into that and held on to it and really put it first and foremost in my life because the positivity, the strength, strength the peace. peace, oh, that's the number one thing is the peace that has come with knowing that I am chosen and that Jesus is with me. It's just like... Clarity. Astounding. It's astounding. So no. number one thing. Yeah. Jesus. Absolutely. And I will never let that one nope. fall away again. Like that is All the number the decades. one through the rest of my life. 40, 50, 60. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Number yeah. two, Roth IRA. <laughs> Roth IRA. We actually just made a video about this. I wish that more than two and a half, three years ago, I would have discovered what a Roth IRA is. Oh. Going to link that video as well because it's got some numbers in it that will blow your mind. If you don't know what he's saying when he says Roth IRA, watch, watch that video. video. Number three, hmm. the opinion of others. This is kind of an ugly subject. Yeah, that's just a little <laughs> Um, I think we talked about this a little bit before, like in vlogs and stuff like that that we've done just in passing, but I've spent way too many years of my life living my life based on the opinion of other people. And what I mean by that is I changed who I was, not even like really consciously, it was almost sometimes subconsciously, just to feel like I fit in, just to feel like people would like me, just to impress people. And that is awful. 
because I did things that I'm not proud of at my core. I did things that who I am deep down inside, it's not me. But at the time, it was me because that's how I operated. I lived my life doing things, making decisions based on what I thought other people would think of me. And what everybody else said is the cool thing to do. Or the, the I don't even know. The, Just the, the on-trend thing the to do. The trendy thing to do. I think that a lot of people will say, I'm going to go and say 90% of you right now watching this are saying, like, I don't care what other people think of me. I used to say that all the time as well. But the, the thing is, you can say that, but do your actions show that? Yeah. Because... Honestly, look inward today and ask yourself, do I actually care though? Because the moment that I stopped doing things in my day-to-day -day life and in my uh, long-term life to appease other people or to do what I thought would fit the mold of who I should be or who other people wanted me to be or who would impress other people or what would look successful to others, even if I didn't consciously think that I was operating under those values, as soon as I actually let go of that, the freedom, the success, the creativity, the strength that I've been able to unlock and find, the authenticity, the, the finding who I am in this world, which, fun fact, your greatest creations and your most abundant success and your greatest gifts to the world are going to come from a place of authenticity. They're never going to come from a place of trying to please other people or fit other people's mold. They're going to come from you stepping into who you are truly and fully accepting it, loving it, and then creating from that place, and you're going to unlock everything you've ever wanted. Amen. But I think, if I remember right, because this sounds a little bit harsh, and I don't want people to take this the way that I think it could be taken. If I remember correctly, what's my next one? Because I think I can tie these things together. Um, actively loving other people. Right. Okay, so I was good. That's what I thought my next one was going to be. So basically, within all of that, I don't want you to think that all of a sudden now, Paige and I live our lives and we're like, we're living our lives for us. No. And everybody else can, can do their own thing and I don't care and blah, blah, blah. Absolutely not. It's actually kind of the opposite. opposite. Basically, what I'm doing now, that last point, I don't want to live based on other people's opinions that are of this world that make me do things who lose myself as a person and who I want to be. But the person that I'm discovering that I want to be as I talked about, number one is a is a follower of Jesus, and I want to be more Christ-like. And within that comes a word that has been very important to you and I uh, recently, which is um, service. So basically, what it comes down to is like I have my core beliefs. I have the person who I want to operate as, and part of that is to serve other people around me. Uh, so there are times where I might do things that I don't necessarily want to do for other people, but it's not for their opinion. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's to help serve them and to show up for them the way that I feel they need to be shown up for. Love them the way they need to be. Love, Love them, them where, they, where are, they are, how they need how it. How they need it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the thing that is really cool that um, is said a lot at our church is to meet people where they are. Yep. And I feel like that's kind of what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, instead of, like, <sighs> shutting down and going off and being by myself and living this life where it's like, only us, we're what matters. Yeah. No, what matters is Jesus. So I'm going to show up and be the person to serve everybody else the way that they need to be served and show them what love is so that they might, in turn, find the peace and stuff that yes. I have found. And I think you, you had a good word here. You said actively love other people. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think that a lot of us are like, oh, well, I love so-and-so. I love so-and-so. I, I, and that's fine to feel love. Like, love is an emotion, of course, but love is more so a verb. It is an action, okay? You have to actively love people. You can't sit in isolation or have this life for yourself, by yourself, selfishly, and say that you also love that person. If, if you love them, you're going to do things to make them uh, understand Correct. that love Absolutely. on their terms, yep. not not just say, "Oh, oh I love I you,", love you. but like, actually, you? like, how how do you love them? What right. are how are you serving them? How are you pouring into them? That's the one. It's a verb. Love is a verb. That was number four. Number five is gratitude. I could talk for days. Yeah. About gratitude. But it's pretty simple. It is. It is very simple, but at the same time, it's probably one of the most complicated things there are. Because I feel like every single day, millions of people, almost everybody I would say, okay. at some point in the day complains about something because it's so easy to complain about things. I'm very guilty. Every day, Paige has to reel me in or I have to reel myself in. Because all I, it's so much easier to look at the negatives around you than the positives. Yeah, true. So one thing that I wish that I would have learned when I was 20 years old 
was to be grateful for where I'm at, what I have, and the opportunities that are in front of me of where I could go. Because I think you need all three. Yeah. I think it's very important to remember your past, remember where you came from, mm -hmm. so that you can truly look at your present and be grateful. Yes. Because you and I are at a place that even four years ago when we started working for this company, we never dreamed we would right. be. So I'm eternally grateful for that. Absolutely. But then, moving forward, we're moving into a different chapter of our lives. Yeah. Instead of sitting there, it's very easy for me to get swept away into forward thinking, future thinking, blah, 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 and that makes me negative about being yeah. here yeah. in the present, and that's not okay. Right. Because I need to remember to be grateful, but then what I can be grateful about for the future while being present now is all of the abundance and the endless opportunity that I have to look forward to in the future. Yeah, and I think just to touch on that a little bit more, something I've learned is that gratitude is a choice mm -hmm. and it is something that you have to actively, like it is a habit and a skill that you need to get in the practice of. It's not just that there's some people who are wired to be grateful and yeah. some people who are wired nope. to not be grateful. It is something where you have to actively say, I, just like you have to force yourself to sit there and say, oh, I'm gonna get up and move my body for 30 minutes a day because I want to feel better in my physical skin. You have to get up and say, I'm going to seek out gratitude today. I yeah. mean, some great gratitude practices are gratitude journaling at night where you just write down 10 things throughout your day that you were grateful for. And I don't just mean like, I'm grateful for my husband, I'm grateful for my health. I mean specifics, like mm -hmm. I am grateful for the color blue that that ocean water is right now and how the sun is perfectly reflecting mm -hmm. on it and the fact that I get to breathe in this nice summer air. Mm -hmm. Like that's a specific thing of gratitude that pulls me into the present because here's why that's a good practice guys, is it gets you in the habit of seeking those things out throughout your day. Yeah. At the end of your day, you know, this is my habit, I'm holding myself to this, I'm writing down 10 things I was grateful for today. Mm -hmm. Throughout your day, you're probably gonna open your eyes a little bit more. Number, Number six is travel. Six. Travel. We're very fortunate. As you know, we work on a cruise ship. If you're new here, we work on a cruise ship. We are performers on a cruise line. We've been doing it for about four years, and we've been to some amazing places that we probably never would have gotten to go had we not done this job. But I didn't realize how important it was to really travel until recently. Yeah. I would love my trips to Disney World, um, to the Florida, Smoky Mountains, the to the beach, everything like that. But what I'm talking about, and I'm not even talking about what we do most days on a cruise ship. Perfect timing. Every Captain, this announcement is from Brian Miller. Kindly contact guest services located on the mobile deck 3 forward or by the extension 7777. Thank you. It's so loud. It's so ridiculous to that. But anyway, I'm not talking about what we do most days here because guess what? If I showed you this right now, you would see a very touristy beach where everybody's just laying under umbrellas, buying coconut drinks, and getting their hair braided. What I'm talking about is the times that we've been yeah. fortunate enough to find a local, or to, hop in a taxi. Let's talk about a or, couple. Yeah. Like the time in St. Lucia where we went to that man's house. Okay, we went to house. a man's house. We got in a taxi. He drove us to this man's house, which was a shack. It was him and his son and a couple dogs who owned this land, and in his backyard was a beautiful waterfall that he just let people come onto his property. He treated them with so much hospitality yeah. that it was Made one of the best days of our life. Coffee Made, drinks oh and my gosh. Just gave us local candies and bananas. We were immersed in this man's life for a it's few amazing. hours. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's about the times like that where you like go see what the rest of the world is doing. When we were in Australia, when we were out of Australia for so many months, so we got to walk around with Australians and live When we were in Australia for months and we got to live like the Australian lifestyle all the time. I mean, I've developed a lot of my eating, my new way of eating, based off of basically living in Australia yeah. for a few months, right? Like the foods that they eat and the the, the whole culture of how they eat, I've kind of adapted yeah. to. Well, um, basically just really travel, guys. Now I'm not saying don't go to Disney World. I'm not saying don't go to the beach because those things are amazing. You can un unwind, relax. I love Disney World. Everybody who knows me knows that I'm a huge but, Disney nerd. But broaden your horizons to really immerse yourself in other cultures. Yeah, there's just so much out there that we don't even know no. about. And it's beautiful to see it. So travel. Travel, for sure. Make it happen. The next one is try everything. Dabble to find what you're interested in. Oh, I was like, what else I mean? 
All right, so this is another thing. I basically thought when I was 20 years old that I had to pick one thing, and that was my life goal and life mission, and that was the only thing that I could strive for. And let's face it, that was performing. Yeah. And it's been my life since I was, I had my first professional performing job when I was 18 years old. I didn't know I was 18. And yeah, I've worked other jobs since then in between, but it's mostly been that's the goal, right? I have to just sing. I have to sing. I have to sing. I have to sing. And it turns out I like a lot more yeah. things than singing. Yikes. Now, that is still a huge passion of mine, and I'm still going to pursue that in the future. However, I think that you should, if you have an interest in something, start learning about it. Yeah. There are so many resources out there. YouTube is one of the best free. resources ever that is free. Where you can get so much information. There are over, they say what, over 300,000 hours of YouTube footage is downloaded every, or uploaded every minute yes. or something like that. It's just unreal. You can type into YouTube anything, and I guarantee you there's a video on it. I guarantee you there's a video on it. So get, use your resources that are available to you and start. just now getting into. I'm watching hours and hours and hours of YouTube to figure out how to do videography, how to do photography. I love music production. I watch hours and hours of videos to teach myself basically how to use Logic Pro X. You can literally learn how to do anything. And guess what? I'm finding out that I'm passionate about those things. And who knows? Maybe I can make something of those in the future. But when I was 20 years old, I was only focused on singing. So I pushed all those things to the side that I could have had more years of experience in learning it. So try everything, find out if you really like it, if it's for you, and if not, take it off the list, and then keep going. But your 20s especially are the time to do that, right? Because like, that is when you're young and you should be trying different things. Like, I'm not saying if you have one thing that you're super passionate about that you shouldn't invest a lot of your time in it, but even just try to carve out like 10% of your waking hours a week to trying try new it. interest. Try it. Because you have no idea what you might unlock and find that could be this huge calling in your life that you're, you know, you're meant to pursue for greater reasons. Try everything. Perfect timing. Number eight is drink coffee. I kid you not. Drink coffee. <laughs> Swallow. I'm gonna spit it. This is the most important tip. Tip. This is probably the least important tip. This should probably just be a bonus tip. This shouldn't even be one of the ten. Here's the most important tip. Don't film videos. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. People can walk up on you. Uh, Drink coffee. I don't know when I started drinking coffee, but it wasn't in my 20s. I mean, it was, because you're 20. I meant like when I, I was mean, like 20. <laughs> We're struggling. We're struggling. When did I start like really drinking think. coffee every day? I think you probably started drinking coffee often. Somewhere on like our third, was it when we were in Australia? Yes. Here's why. I was an energy drink junkie. Oh yeah. I would drink full flavored soda and energy drinks all day long. I used to, when I was a child, drink a full flavored Dr. Pepper as I was falling asleep. <laughs> okay. I have a caffeine problem. I admit that. But monster, monster, monster was my my life. Coke. So why did you? Why did you about the monster. Why did you switch? Because of my health. Mm. And I know that there's a lot of things in those energy drinks that are really, really bad for your insides. How did you? What, what made you discover that? Life. Just life. Just randomly, it just came to you that this those were probably really bad for you. Super pressing wife. Ah, there it is. She just loves trying to make you feel bad about yourself. No, that is not it. I like trying to elevate your life, I'm babe. just kidding. Basically, then I discovered coffee, which, should I still drink as much as I do? Probably not, because the caffeine shouldn't be dependent on it. However, much better for you than drinking all of the garbage that is in today's energy drinks and sodas. Did you know it is the number one source of antioxidants in the American diet? Coffee. Which probably is something more so sad to say about the American, American diet, diet than it is about coffee, but it is a great antioxidant. Now, if you can, don't load it with tons of like creams and sugars and XYZs. Did you see that guy just like walk up on us? She didn't care. It's okay. Cruise ship life. All right, so this is great. The next one is number nine.
find you wrote health and fitness in the right way. Absolutely. So this one, it's still kind of recent, to be honest with I you. I think it's kind of a two-part as well. Like, yeah. step one was your journey from, like, completely unhealthy lifestyle to yeah. health and fitness the way the world says you should yeah. conform and, then, and be and healthy. And then getting and then to where I am true now. Health and so basically, I was a very unhealthy person, as we just kind of talked about. Soda, full-flavored sodas all the time. Out to eat Talk every day. Bell, because let's be honest, I didn't know how to spend my money or save my money. Another video for that one, link in the description. Price, Learning apps. how to save your money and spend your money well. How to budget, link in the description. But basically, I was a very unhealthy person. Uh, but I had this wonderful metabolism that kept me pretty thin. I was dancing and singing most days, six days a week. So I stayed thin, right? But like my insides were screaming. Rotting. Rotting and screaming. So basically, then I got on this whole kick, especially when we got this job, right? Because it's part of the entertainment oh, yeah. industry, which we'll make a whole other video about that once we're, yeah. we're a little bit out of the entertainment industry. Yeah. But basically, I got into this whole, oh, I have to find this crash course diet and count my calories and get macros shredded. and get shredded and bulk and cut and blah, blah, blah. It was exhausting. And I struggled with that for years, right? I would be on it and start looking good because I was following this thing, and then I would get so sick of it that I would just crash. Yeah. So and we I would were, start going back to the fast we food. We were all about the um, a very restrictive diet, oh, all man. about the we would we would consume our minds like, oh well, is that in my macros and is that within this? And oh well, I need to make sure I get an extra protein. We'd be like sick, sickly full from eating dinner, so that we you'd be like, oh, I need 20 more grams of protein, so let me chug back this shake, like. <sighs> We'd be at the gym, like, mm. we have to make sure, you you know, he he's not always loved, like, getting up to go to the gym, and he would, like, force himself to, like, I have to get up there and go do this workout. And now I think we've just evolved finding health and fitness the way that it was, like, intended, intended to, be, to be. Which, which is, I mean, to be honest with you, I just consciously make better choices. Yeah. But if I want the burger, I get the burger. I'm going to make a video here soon, something that I've discovered that I think Jeremy's kind of always been really good at. Um, which is like intuitively eating. Now again, we talked about how he's kind of had to add in more healthful, nutritious options yeah. because of like longevity and feel good reasons. Now that he's more of an adult, you know, we're not kids who can run I'm off about burgers and fries all the time. He's about to be 30. Um, so I'm gonna make a video on that, but it's just, it's it's eating to, to honor our body's needs yeah. from a healthful standpoint and from a pleasure standpoint, yeah. as well as moving our bodies to, Just, because moving yeah. your body is what gives you energy, guys. So many people that I talk to say, I don't know how you work out. Okay? I can't work out because I don't have energy to work out. You guys, objects that sit still from. will stay still. So if you just move your body, that's you're gonna you're you're giving your life energy. Working out should never be to burn calories, to get shredded, to look better. X Y Z. Working feel out should be to feel good, to feel energized. So that's what's fun about our workouts now. Is it's, it's a lifestyle. Not, yes. Like, here's the fun fact. This last New York, what did we do? We wanted to go to the World Trade Center. You know how easy it would have been for us to walk two blocks, pay $3, hop on the subway, and be at the World Trade Center in two minutes. However, what did we do? We found city bikes, so rented them out, fun. rode them all the way along the river, all the way down to the World Trade Center. It was a beautiful day. We were active, way more active than we would have been. And we still got to do what we wanted to do, but also experience something else together as well. That's being an... That's having an active lifestyle. And there is research that shows you guys that having an active lifestyle, and hear me when I say that, don't just hear the word active lifestyle and brush past it as like a cliche phrase. No. An active lifestyle, meaning throughout your day, you are moving however you want to move. You are physically active. I mean, guys, like I'm talking anything. Like when you garden, you are, be you are working out. When you are playing with your children in the backyard, that is a workout. When you are just moving, they have, studies have shown that from your waking hours, if you are in a constant kind of state of motion or consistently moving throughout your day, so say every hour you move for like five minutes and then do one 30 minute continuous movement based activity, the health benefits are astounding. So She's gonna make more videos about this. I will. We've been talking way too long. I think right. that was number nine. All right, we're on Let's to number 10. Let's wrap this up because Ooh, this I know you good. all wanna get out of here. Last one guys, you're not alone. You are not alone. This kind of encompasses almost all of them, right? I had a period in my life where I felt very alone. And 
I think that everybody feels that throughout their life at some point. Where this is, why is this happening to me? Why doesn't this happen to everybody else? Blah blah blah. Especially in today's society, all we see on social media and everything like that is everybody's everybody's highlight reel, as a lot of people like to call it. We don't see what they're actually going through. Bottom line is number one, you are never alone because Jesus and God are right with you the whole time. Whether you care to look for them or not, they're right there. So if you turn around, you're gonna bump into them. But number two, I guarantee you that there's somebody else going through what you are going through. So reach out, use your resources again, find somebody who's going through what you're going to and talk to them because we were built to have community. We were built as social creatures. There are, that's how we get through things. We can't get through things by ourselves. As one human being, you're not gonna get through things. You can do it for years and years and it's gonna pile up and eventually something's gonna happen to you where you can't do it by yourself. So find the people around you. Somebody else has been through it or is going through it or knows somebody who has. Reach out, talk to people, build your community. Cultivate a community, Cultivate guys. a community because you are not alone and you never will be alone. So use your resources, reach out to people, that's it. Things that I wish I would have started operating with 10 years ago. Cool, so Jeremy's gonna be 30. So exciting. We hope that these 10 tips, you guys, no matter how old you are, you can implement them now. If you have some things that maybe you are in your 30s or maybe whatever decade of life you're in that you wish you would have known, hey, maybe you're turning 40 or you're in your 40s and you're like, here, I have all of those things in my 30s, but here are the things I wish I would have had in yeah, my 30s. Send them to us because then... You, Jeremy going into his 30s, he can walk into his 30s with your guys. Absolutely. Don't send those to us. Just comment them. I yeah. want them instantaneously and yes. I want to be able to respond to you and start a conversation. Comment them down below. Let's start chatting. And yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we'll put up a lot of pics and videos from my actual birthday um, that we are spending at sea. This might be my last birthday spent at sea. I'll never say never, but it's in the cards. So, if you guys like this video, if you guys like any of our other videos, if you like those other videos we linked down below, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything, and let us know also in the comments what other videos you want to yeah. see like this one. Thanks for hanging out. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.